There is now a need for a new look at literacy. Metaliteracy. Metaliteracy is a new term for literacy in digital culture because we can all communicate with many digital tools all over the world. Literacy used to mean primarily reading and writing, mostly in print, but today most content is born digital. Literacy in digital culture requires juggling formats, both physical and digital, and we're now all required to become good digital citizens, as most of our communication and information intake is in digital formats. So here we are interacting as avatars, which is a digital embodiment of each of us. Please type a Y in the text chat if you feel that digital citizenship is important, or type an N if you're not really familiar with that term, digital citizen. Let me see if I see anyone type a Y. Digital citizenship is our topic. Alvin Toffler, he's a well-known futurist, he coined the term prosumer when he saw that individuals were beginning to create and share content themselves. And he talked about this before the turn of the century, well before. This is what we call user-generated content, the content that you and I create. The information hierarchy toppled during my career as a librarian. We now have far more user-generated content than we have traditional media formats, such as books in print. YouTube has become the number one source of information on the planet, and TikTok has recently become, globally, the number one social media platform that is being downloaded, especially by young people. And with all this user-generated content being uploaded every single moment of the day, we are bombarded by information constantly. And this is a challenge to literacy the volume of information that we get coming toward us every single moment of the day. And this illustrates the need to rethink about literacy. How many of you avatars standing here on my platform upload content online? Please type the platform where you upload or post content the most often. Perhaps it's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, your blog, Twitter, Twitch, Discord, TikTok, or other apps. Type the name of one that you use the most. I know a lot of students use Instagram. Yes, I see Instagram, Instagram, quite popular. I, I think I heard your professor say you have a blog. So there's another user-generated content um, platform. If you think of a different one, feel free to type in chat as we go. Now I mentioned Alvin Toffler. Alvin Toffler has a famous quote, which I really like, and it relates to changing literacy. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Our apps and our operating systems are constantly updating, upgrading, and changing. And some of the elderly people that I work with in my library in the physical world, they find this constant change, a huge challenge, because they learned in a more linear way. This constant oscillation, a swinging between production and consumption of media, a swinging between physical and digital formats. This aligns to our philosophical moment of time, which I call metamodernism. Metamodernism is the term many people are beginning to use to identify our current philosophical moment because postmodernism has ended. A 
Of course, it's difficult to name and to fully understand our historical moment while we're in it. But time will tell. Some people are calling our current era post postmodernism, but I think that sounds redundant. Acquiring knowledge way back in the past meant climbing a ladder toward final mastery. Not anymore. In metamodern culture, we learn new tools and apps constantly while evaluating live information and adapting to new devices and constant software updates. There is no end to the incoming stream of information. So my recent book, Metamodernism and Changing Literacy, addresses this challenge and the many challenges we face due to these changes. It's become imperative that we each understand our personal responsibility as digital citizens. I've introduced you to a term that fits with this responsibility, personal responsibility, at all ages, from young children to the el elderly, metaliteracy. I didn't come up with this word. Mackey and Jacobson in 2014, and even a little before that, coined the term to help us better understand how we can be literate in digital culture as prosumers in, in lots of online communities. And this is essential to digital citizenship. You can find more at the metaliteracy.org site where I shared a guest blog post. And you can see on this circle, if you zoom in, we play many roles as a metaliterate learner. You can be an author yourself with your blog a translator, a participant, a producer, a publisher, many roles we play as both a consumer and a producer of content. Now the internet connected us all, everyone, and it gave everyone a voice. Yet not everyone has something meaningful to add to the conversation. The internet has become a flood of information that is impossible to navigate without metaliteracy. So once we understand what it means to be prosumers and participants in digital culture, well, unless you're a hermit high up in the mountains with no internet connection at all, we become aware of the need for digital citizenship. We can learn to be an ethical contributor and participant. Do you feel it's important for you to be an ethical digital, digital citizen? Type a Y or an N in the chat. As I said, everyone has a voice online, but not everything shared is good, meaningful, or even true. In fact, Mackey and Jacobson believe we live in what they call a post-truth world. The many elements of digital citizenship are beyond the scope of this short talk today. But they cover ethical use of information, cybersecurity and safety, online communication, privacy, and even emotional intelligence. Take a look at this digital citizenship wheel, the colorful wheel I'm sitting on. You can zoom in on it. It is from the DQ Institute. I'll give you the, the web link. My library here in Second Life, the community virtual library, has built a digital citizenship museum in another virtual world called Kitely. And we have library branches and other virtual worlds besides Second Life, even in VR platforms. You can find more on our website. You'll see on the wheel that met meta literacy intersects with all of these concepts. Each one of you standing right here, each avatar is a digital identity. And you have the, need, the, the responsibility to understand digital communication, digital security, and all of these elements of digital citizenship. Balance. Zoom in on this balancing act slide. If you zoom close, you can read a lot of the things we're balancing. 
I said I was a school librarian for 20 years, and during that time, I witnessed the close of the Gutenberg parentheses. The Gutenberg press for 500 years was king of information, books. Print is no longer king of information. You can look up the Gutenberg parentheses later if that intrigues you. It was that period of about 1500 to 2000. When, when books became accessible to anyone. Prior to that, only monks and scribes understood how to read and write and print. But now, fixed print media is giving way to fluid digital media. No more printed encyclopedias and dictionaries. Well, you can find some, but there are very few. I stopped order ordering encyclopedias right after the turn of the century. But how many of you standing here still enjoy reading a book in print, turning those physical pages? I do. I think print books will always be around. Type a Y if you still enjoy a print book with pages. I'd like to see some Ys there. If you don't, it's fine to type an N. I'll type a Y myself. I love print books. I think they'll always be around, but we also use ebooks, websites, databases, videos, podcasts, blogs, and a million of apps. Juggling all these tools, sometimes simultaneously, is actually changing the human brain. There's research on it. And this juggling is part of meta literacy and part of digital citizenship. You can get sucked away by this constant stream of social media into a self-absorbed whirlpool. More on the dark side of digital culture in my book, and there is a dark side. Not only must we learn to juggle and to choose the best digital tools, we also juggle between worlds, physical, virtual, or augmented. Choosing the best space for a specific purpose, whether you're working, gaming, socially interacting, or learning, that's also a meta-literacy skill. It's a balancing act that's now a personal responsibility. New platforms are emerging constantly with virtual reality headsets and 360-degree videos becoming mainstream. So... As I say, meta literacy is indeed a balancing act. You can also type a Y if you have a VR headset. I know many people are now purchasing them and exploring them. Both Sidearm and I have explored many VR headset platforms, as well as what we call VR desktop platforms, like we're in right now in Second Life. I know Magua is doing a lot of research with VR headsets. Personally, I feel as immersed right here in Second Life with all of you as I do on my headset. But I, I have many more tools available here at my fingertips. Meta-modernism. Meta-modernism, I'll talk a little bit about that. Yes. The information revolution changed literacy forever. We live in a fascinating, fast-paced time. No matter what it's called, I've adopted this term metamodernism in discussion of our current philosophical era, although there are other names, as I mentioned, like post-postmodernism or, <clears throat> excuse me, hypermodernism. I present this topic today to you as avatars here in the metaverse, a place where metadata constructs a simulation of reality. Think about that. We're here inside a metaphor of our world. And as you think about that, you are using metacognition, which means thinking about thinking. About, about, about. Meta, meta, meta. Our library supports the Virtual Worlds Education Consortium. We're rebranding our overall website name soon to 
metaverselibraries.org. It's under development. But this shows the importance of understanding digital citizenship and meta literacy in the metaverse. I think we've become meta modern, and it's certainly time to become meta literate. So metamodernism, it, it really includes the way we express ourselves in our cultural era, whether it's through art or literature, music, or even architecture. While postmodernism tore down grand narratives, it was filled with irony, and it brought a plethora of dystopian fiction. Metamodernism, metamodernism is, is ushering in a new age that balances irony and sincerity a new age that balances a respect for tradition and the past alongside the excitement of innovation and the future. A balance. And my book looks at our philosophical era of the past, stressing the importance of learning history. Of course, it's impossible to fully understand, as I said, or even to name a historical moment when you're living it right in the present. So we'll see if it's adopted, metamodernism. But I'll move over here to a slide that talks about learning environments. You're in one right now. We're in a virtual learning environment. This slide shows how digital culture has changed learning environments. Look at the slide at the upper left, traditional rows of desks, that's so old fashioned that has evolved into virtual spaces and augmented reality apps as we merge into multiple realities. I mentioned that Sidearm and I have visited many different educational environments with and without VR headsets. We've also explored AR, augmented reality, many apps, which are also a meta literacy skill. And another important part of digital metamodern culture and meta literacy is the preservation of formats. As I said, books are a wonderful format that will most likely always be around. You can take them anywhere. They last for many, many years. Digital content is hard to organize and it's certainly hard to preserve. I know someone who lost all of his content because it was on these little floppy disks you see on the left and they became corrupted. Some of you may never have even seen those. I won't go in deeply into this topic today because it, it, it deserves a lot of conversation, but it's, it's important. Preservation is important for all of us on a personal level. I heard the archivist of the United States say this is what keeps him up at night because if we don't understand how to preserve our digital content when everything is born digital, we could lose it forever and enter the digital dark ages. Most content today, as I said, is born in a digital format. We have to learn how to migrate to new formats or it could all be lost. Look at the top left. The Dead Sea Scrolls were dug up after thousands of years and you can still piece them together. Digital format, digital formats can be invisible. Today, MP3s are the top of the music formats, but that will change. And MP4s are at the top of video formats, but that too will change. And the hardware that we use to access these forms and formats that is changing too. What about photos? Do any of you have concerns about archiving and organizing your photos that you take on your digital devices? I remember finding my great grandmother's photo album in a physical photo album and seeing what she looked like. Will our grandchildren find our photos if we haven't organized them? Digital archival is going to be a problem in the future for all of us individually, and as a culture. What will happen to all our digital assets when we pass away? 
and worlds like this, all of my work in Second Life, will it simply disappear? A whole industry is arising in the field of digital legacy, which means archiving people's assets and all of their content when they die. So, I've given you two terms today for you to think about. Metamodernism and our cultural moment and meta-literacy, a new way to think about literacy. Meta-literacy is simply a term to address literacy as prosumers today. And this is how they talk about it on the meta-literacy site. Meta-literacy promotes critical thinking and collaboration in the digital age, providing a comprehensive framework to effectively participate in social media and online communities. It's a unified construct that supports the acquisition, production, and sharing of knowledge in collaborative online communities. And that's where we live and work and learn and play, in online communities, primarily, although I still love my physical world communities and face-to-face -face relationships as well. Now, I've got a few references for you here today just to look at for a moment. And I hope that you're pondering those questions that I gave you that are on the placard near the ramp, because I do want you to be able to talk about them from your own perspective. And I hope you will critically be thinking about your own literacy. The pandemic forced many of us to use new tools. And some people had never used a lot of these digital tools. It was not easy for them. You might be comfortable as college and university students using all these digital tools and applications. But even for you who are comfortable with this, it's impossible to use them all. The incredible volume of apps and information online can be overwhelming. And too much information is as problematic as too little. We're drowning in information. And we need to learn how to navigate it through it.